legislators in Congress and even through the Supreme Court have dealt with, which is, you know, it, it, it's an independent expenditure is a form of speech, and um, they've been very reluctant to put any kinds of limitations on that speech. So what they did then was to, to actually open up who could make that kind of speech to corporations. So an individual could make that in an unlimited amount as long as it was truly independent. And under the court ruling and under your proposed law, um, can, uh, corporations through their PACs could still make direct contributions to candidates. Correct. And here's here's the other thing. If the corporation <coughs> already sponsors a PAC, because that's one of the exceptions of the campaign finance law, the prohibition on partisan political activity, uh, the corporation now could contribute money to its PAC to make an independent expenditure, but the PAC would need to segregate that those funds uh, away from the rest of its funds because it uses the rest of its funds to make direct contributions to candidates. And those would be unlimited amounts of funds that the corporations could give to those PACs? Uh, it would be possible to, uh, at, at this point, yes, from what we can tell from looking at the constitutional law. Uh, I'm sure there would be some who would want to say if it's giving, if you're giving money to a PAC, uh, then you, we're going to put the PAC contribution limit on it. Um, that one might have to be tested by the court. Because again, it's the corporation, it's corporation and it's PAC both saying we want to make an independent expenditure and speak. Does this put, uh, would this put us on equal footing with the federal guidelines or take us a step beyond? Uh, actually, federal government hasn't done anything yet. Uh, they have legislation that they have um, proposed. I don't even know if it's been introduced yet. I know Chuck Schumer was working on it. But, You've got a Secretary of State who knows Ohio election law, and I might as well do my job sooner than later. And you know, I, I have Ohio voters to protect, and I, our law is not the same as other states' laws. It's not the same as the federal law, but I, I understand how the impact of the decision um, can play here in Ohio. And what I want to do is to minimize its impact because if you look at some of the, the polls out there, um, it's about 80% of the voters. I have severe disapproval of what the Citizens United decision is, stands for, and is likely to do. And um, the cost of campaigns is going up and up and up, and the, the satisfaction of the voters with the process is going down and down and down. So um, the least that we can do is to propose something that will inject some transparency and some accountability into the process so that uh, voters have some tools at their disposal to try to gain more information about who's speaking and local interests are. You mentioned the um, Ohio vote situation earlier. Is there any, uh, any response to the subpoenas or office issued? Uh, uh, to my knowledge, I I've been traveling and visiting the boards of elections lately, but uh, to my knowledge, no. Uh, so far, no court from the lawsuits, so that's good. Is your expectation there will be a, an attempt to try and quash these subpoenas, or are they going to comply? Well, I, I, you know, in looking at this, um, it seems difficult to, having been a judge myself, um, when the Secretary of State has a specific written duty to investigate irregularities of the election law um, and, and actually make complaints with the Elections Commission, uh, they'll have to make some pretty persuasive arguments to convince a court that. I can't do my job. Is there a loophole at play here? I mean, the official response mm -hmm. in that case seems to be as long as the Ohio entity discloses the source of its contribution, <coughs> which it did, the nonprofit, as long as the nonprofit files its 990 with the IRS, you know, you've satisfied the statute as it exists. I mean, is there a loophole here that sort of allows this to, to, to happen and, you know, circumvent the, uh, the intent of the uh, disclosure requirements? I'm not sure that I call it a loophole because there's always the concealment statute, but that's a, a little less, um, the, 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 line, the line is not as bright. And so many times when someone wants to go after the concealment, understanding from a case law standpoint where you draw the line, uh, where, where, where it becomes concealment and where it's not, it's gonna, it depends on uh, an analysis on a case-by-case -case basis depending upon the intent of the people involved. But um, concealment is about as uh, untruthful as you can be. Uh, so, and again, we're trying to inject some sunshine into the process. 
How close are you to making a decision on the certification? We're still waiting to get um, signature verification back to the boards of back from the boards of elections. I was at the Jackson County Board of Elections this morning, and they're getting through. We, there were quite a few statewide petitions filed after they had finished reviewing petitions for the second round for Let Ohio Vote. So they're they're very much looking forward to getting the petitions back to us. Once we have them back from all 88 counties, then it's just a, a matter of making sure all the petitions are sufficient. We're we'll talking days, a week or so? Um, I would say within the next week. And you know, unless there's a protest filed on anything, which I don't know about. How do you feel about the requirements for sub-vendor um, disclosure and, and related to the Let Ohio Vote case? Now, there's a Senator Houston has proposed to get to the point where you, you couldn't theoretically conceal uh, by saying that whoever you give the money to has to thus has to uh, then say how they spend it. I, I think it. I think it depends on the situation. It, ha it would have to be narrowly drafted so that it wouldn't go to the absurd. 